Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to show you how to connect to a Postgres database in Python. So to get started, I need to install a single library and this library is called CyclePG2. So I'll run pip install and I already have a virtual environment set up. So CyclePG2, so P-S-Y-C-O-P-G-2 and it's already installed. And then next what I want to do is I want to import it. So CyclePG2. And then once I have that, I can go ahead and connect to my database. So I have the credentials above in those four variables. And what I want to do is I want to call the function called connect. So I'll use cycle PG2 uh, connect, and it's going to take in those credentials. So DB name is going to be DB name. And then the username is going to be DB user. Password is going to be DB pass. And finally, the host is going to be DB host. And anytime you call the connect function, it's going to return a connection object. So I'll call this con. And anytime you have a connection, you want to close it at the end. So con.close. And I'm going to write all my code uh, in the middle here. So I want to make sure that it's connecting properly. So if I run my script, so it's just like pip, or not pip, python script.py. If it returns, then you know it's working. And to verify that it's working correctly, you can try passing in some invalid credentials. So I'm just removing the nine from my password. And when I run it again, I get this error telling me that it failed the password authentication. So I know it's working correctly when it returns nothing. So now what I want to do is I want to execute a statement in here. And to execute a statement, the first thing I need to do is I need to create a cursor and the cursor allows me to execute statements. So what I can do is I can call this cur. So for the cursor, that's going to be returned by the cursor method on the connection. And then using that cursor method, I can execute statements like create statements, insert statements, select statements, you know, the statements that you have in SQL. And kind of like the connection, I have to close it when I'm done. So uh, cursor close. And what I'll do is I'll write the code in here. So first thing I want to do is I want to create a table. So I'll call the cursor and the execute method on cursor. And I'll say create table. And for a table name, I'll use student. So this would be like a student table. And then I can specify the columns and I'll just use two. ID, and it's gonna be serial and it's gonna be the primary key. And I'll also have a name column and it's gonna be a var car. Okay, so let me try running this. Doesn't return any errors. And since I'm creating it here, what I expect to see when I run the script again is an error telling me that the table already exists. So I'll run it and I don't get that error. So the reason why I don't get that error is because I have to commit on the connection anytime I run a statement like this. So anytime I'm changing the database in some way, I have to commit when I'm done. So you can take the connection and run commit on it, the commit method. And this will save anything that I run in the execute that comes before it. So I'll run this and I'll try running it again. And now I get the error telling me that the student table already exists. So I'll comment this out. And now what I want to do is I want to enter some data. And that's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to use the cursor again. And I'll call it insert into student. And I want to specify the name of the column. So I'll use the name column. And I need to pass in the values. So it's just one thing. And I'll use percent %s. So percent %s is a placeholder. And this execute will add anything that you supply as a sequence as a second argument into the percent %s's. So if I have like three percent %s's inside of my statement, then I need a sequence of three things. And it's going to take the first, put it in the first, and the last, put it in the last, and the middle one, put it in the middle one. So I'll use a tuple, and I'll just pass in my name, so Anthony. And I'll run this. And I'll try a couple other names. So say Bob is a second name. I'll run this again. And final name, uh, Christina. Run this. And I should have three students in my database now. So I'll comment this out. And the first thing I want to do is I want to see all of those students. So I'll run a cursor, execute, and I'll write a select statement. So select star from student. And this should give me all the students that are in my database. And to view them, we're going to call a method called fetch all on the cursor. So cursor fetch all, and this will give me everything. And I can print this out and run it. 
and now I see the three users that are in my database. So it just gives me a list of tuples. If I want to get one specific user, so let me comment this out on this, and I'll run execute select star from student where ID equals percent S, I'll pass in one, and I expect to get a single value out of this. So when you expect one thing, instead of calling fetch all, you can call fetch one. And I'll wrap this in print statements again. And I'll run it. And this time we see we get a single tuple for this. And using tuples can be a little tedious when it comes to getting the results back, especially if you're getting a lot of columns back. So for instance, let's say I had 10 columns instead of two, I'd have to reference them by the index. So zero for the ID and one for the name. If I wanted to reference them by the name of the column, then I have to use a different kind of cursor. So to do that, I'm going to import a psycho pg2.extras. And here in the cursor, I'm going to pass in a cursor factory. So not cursory, but cursor, cursor factory. And this is going to be equal to uh, cycle pg2 dot extras dot dictionary cursor. So D I C T cursor capital D capital C. And now when I run this, it looks a little different. It looks like a list, but it isn't a list. Instead, it is a dictionary. So if I call a name on it, it will just give me the name. If I call ID on it, it will just give me the ID instead. And now the last thing I wanna show you is you can use with statements with this. So you see how I'm using commit here and close. If you wanna use with statements, uh, first I'll start with the cursor. So with a cursor, so connection dot cursor uh, as cursor. Uh, what I can do is move this inside the with statement. And actually I want, yeah, this is fine. I'll move this inside of the with statement and I'll comment this out. And what this means is anytime you have a with statement with a cursor, once the with statement has finished executing, it's going to close the cursor for you automatically. So this should be the same result. And it isn't because I'm not using the cursor factory here. So I'll just put that in here. But now when I run it, I see I get one again and I get the name again. So this is a way for you to avoid writing the close on the cursor. You can get around and closing the connection, but you can get around writing commits. And to do that, you would use this. So you can say with connection, and then here I'll comment this out. So everything will be indented here, and this can go away. And I'll change this back to an insert statement. So we want, when you run with on the connection, when the with statement finishes executing, it's going to commit for you automatically. So what I'll do is I'll comment this out momentarily and I'll bring it back, but I'll insert another user, say David, and let's see if everything looks good. So with connection up here, and let me move this down so it's not so confusing. And it's going to execute this code inside of the cursor first. And then it's going to exit out of the width for the connection. And it's going to automatically commit for me. So I'll run this. And now I'll bring back a select statement. So bring that back. And then how about this? I'll bring back a select star. And then I'll print everything. So if it committed for me uh, last time, I should see that fourth user, David, in the database. And we see I'm not using commit, so let's see. And we see David there. So using the with statement with a connection, it will automatically commit for me. So it's pretty easy to use Postgres in Python. Really the complicated part is just figuring out what queries you need to run, but actually connecting to the database and executing the queries is pretty straightforward. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you next time.